Hey guys, bring it in. I'm gonna be going over five reasons why you shouldn't take on investor money for your startup. Now, before anybody calls me the evil villain, cue the intro. So guys, in this video today, I'm going to be discussing, as stated before, three reasons why you should not take on a venture capital in investor, because the concept of this is that just because there's money out there doesn't necessarily mean it's in your best interest because there's conditions to this. So just a little bit of a recap, and I have other videos on this. Venture capital gives startups money in exchange for equity and other things, which I'm going to discuss in order to scale up so that helps the founder and also to generate returns for the firm because they have investors as well. But with everything in this world, there's pros, there's cons, there's going to be a cost benefit analysis to everything that you do. So first, let's explain one of the potential downfalls that I think a lot of people do not rectify. So first, you can have a potential loss of control in this, in your own company, which is crazy because here's the thing, venture capital, yes, they do take what's called minority shares and, and they can have a board seat, which means they do have influencing decisions decisions, but they can also abuse this. Some people that are way over the top can, can come in and mess with your everyday operations. And I've even heard stories about how certain types of investors will only give you capital if they fire the CEO and bring in somebody new. Now guys, let's think about this for just a second. If you're the founder and the CEO, essentially what they're saying is that they're going to fire you, put somebody else in just so they can make a quick buck. And guys, this could mess with the founder's vision and ultimately change the product and everything that you worked hard to do. So that's just a potential downfall in one of the worst case situations. Next, I'm gonna be going over the pressure to scale quickly, right? So you remember what I said before about venture capitalists having their own investors? Well, yeah, that's in the form of limited partners, right? And in exchange for, for you giving them money, them giving equity, they also are pressured by their investors in order to give returns after a certain period of time after you go through a liquidity event, whether that is an exit acquisition or any of the other ones I've talked about in previous videos as well. So to be quite honest with you, some bad actors might not have it in your best interest at heart and they might be making decisions just so you can scale at a very fast rate in, in order to please their investors. And uh, to be quite honest with you, this isn't a long-term solution because ideally with startups, in order to get to the public market or, I, or IPO, which I'm gonna keep spamming the fact that I've gone over these terms before in other videos. So if you don't know what I'm saying, please Please reference those other videos. But to go back to the main point, in order for you to IPO, which is what a lot of people aim to do, it's like a 10 year plus time horizon. And with that being said, they might be looking at the short term hires, growth strategies that are only meant for you to scale rapidly at the beginning, easily fall apart towards the uh, very end of things. So like I said, venture capitalist is meant to be a partnership. If you see any of these trades going on where they're trying to shortchange you, where there's big funds, small funds, or anything of the sort, you really need to work on finding the right team because it's more than just getting money, right? You're after their expertise as well if you're from the founder side of, of the checkpoint as well. So you should really advocate for yourself and really make sure that this is a partnership that's focusing on the long-term vision years and years out and not giving too much control of decisions in order to essentially drive your startup into the ground and that is your baby uh, uh, essentially. So next is one that's very near and dear to my heart because this happens a lot. And this is the concept of equity dilution, right? And this is simply means as the shares go up, your ownership in the company goes down. And I'm gonna make you a quick example because I'm going to kind of lace this in with the overall point, right? So let's just say that you get to the very end of your journey that you've IPO'd, that you become the next Facebook, the next Airbnb, and all these other characters, but there's only one problem with all of this, right? You've given away so much equity because you've diluted your startup so much that you're living in a 500 square foot apartment in the middle of New York City because you gave up too much ownership right off the bat. And guys, I know that sounds like a crazy scenario, but unfortunately, I know of many use cases where people threw dilution out of the window and so on and so forth. So with that being said, luckily, there's tons of research on this and there's tons of market insights if you're a founder or even if you're an investor, kind of guide the ways that you're doing this. So according to this index here, which is published by Carta, which is one of the 
the most reliable authorities on this type of liquidity events and whatnot. These are general guidelines for how much di dilution you should expect per round. Keep in mind, these are general guidelines and things do, things do change. But the theme here and what you see is that people are not taking too much dilution at the very beginning. Like it'd be crazy. You should never be giving up half your company right off the bat just because you want more money. Now keep in mind, this always changes with capital intensive types of fields like space tech and all this other stuff. I'm sure it's a different ball game, but when you're dealing with startups, then you know it's kind of fair game and you don't want to be called uneducated. So also another downside is people can only be focused on short-term goals. And let me frame it like this, right? What if I told you that the statistics support that in a lot of cases, venture-backed startups actually have a higher probability to fail? Now that sounds like an oxymoron, but let me explain. So in the normal world, right? Startups right off the bat have a 90 to 95 percent chance of failing without investor capital. Now, within every venture back startup, about 30, about one in five will fail on top of all that. And a lot of the reasons because of this is because of your bad actors. It's because of the, those people that uh, don't have sustainability and smart goals and are just chasing dollar signs for their in investors. Now, here's the thing, right? You need to get with an investor that understands and a lot of credible investors were actually prior founders. Now, if they are not, you need to really dig into this, right? Because I don't know that many people that would trust, you know, Stanford kids or any other of that ones, at least those that like have some sense or anything like that without any sense of empathy, relatability and startup operating experience. But you need, but you, what you need to do, you need to be on the same page in regards to long-term success because it is a partnership at the end of the day. And so once again, if you feel pressure to perform, over having expectation management, then I highly suggest that you get out of this situation. So yeah, guys, um, that's about the points that I really wanted to address. But at the end of the day, all of your situations are gonna be looking different. So I guess some of the advice that I could definitely provide for you is that look at industry averages when it comes to things like dilution, talk to other successful venture-backed founders and all these other things. And if you're an investor, take everything that I just said and be a good person right everybody's gonna win if you just look for the interest of the founder and the fact that they want to generate revenue at the end of the day you know there shouldn't be this little sleaze bag complex in the area of venture capital where where there's a bad rep of founders being ripped off by these guys just to make a quick buck by the way at the end of the day they also do owe money to their investors so when startups continue to fail at a rapid rate they probably won't be able to raise their other fund as well and remember every situation is different what worked for startup a will definitely not work for startup b so guys with that being said thank you and make sure you subscribe on youtube for more venture capital content and i'll see you guys on the next video and thank you so much for helping me scale we are well above 1k and we're going to keep the good times rolling peace